what we have here is a rotating dishwasher rack, and uh, why we designed it was because uh, one day one of our co-founders, uh, his mother, uh, accidentally sprained her back while she was reaching into the dishwasher to grab one of the lo lower dishes. And so that got us ta uh, thinking about dishwashers and how it's used. Um, so the dishwasher greatly saves time and, and, and effort in terms of washing the dishes, but what happens before and after washing the dishes, there's a lot of mechanical labor that's still involved. Uh, you still have to rinse the dishes, you still have to put them into the dishwasher, and you still have to take them out later and put it back into your cupboards. So what we propose to do is uh, to sort of integrate the convenience of a dishwasher more broadly to these like manual labors that involve before and after. Once you take this out of the dishwasher, uh, you basically rotate the bottom rack up so that you could grab the dishes at a more convenient height. In addition, you can actually unload the entire basket at once. So you can take the entire rack off and then put it into your cabinet. That way, it, that way it saves a lot of time and you don't have to like bend your back repeatedly to do that. The dishwasher is a very hostile environment and so it has to stand up to high temperature, um, turbulent water and detergent. So we plan to use um, materials that are already proven, um, polypropylene and stainless steel, which you know are typically used in dishwashers today and definitely will replace the wood. So we built a product that we call ICOM and it stands for Intuitive Communication via Ocular Motion and it's an assistive communication device that allows intubated intensive care units to communicate to doctors using their eyes. People that are under mechanical ventilation, they can look at a screen and they have a headband that they wear that senses their eye position and they're able to communicate uh, common phrases and to spell out things to doctors that they can't speak obviously because they're under mechanical ventilation. It uses electrooculography and that's a process where the front of the eye is positively charged with respect to the back of the eye. So if they look to the left for example, then on the left-hand side of their face, it'll be more positive than the uh, right-hand side of their face. And we can obtain these signals using electrodes that are placed around their face and translate that into uh, motion on a computer screen. The headband itself is made from fabric that we got from Fabric Land and some pretty simple electrodes. It was just in our free time that we've been working on over the last month or so. We're from BCIT, the British Columbia Institute of Technology. What we have here is a single-wheeled motorcycle trailer intended to haul bicycles. There currently doesn't exist a method for someone to haul a bicycle from point A to point B using strictly a motorcycle. Uh, this is the first of its kind. It incorporates a bunch of very key characteristics that preserve the original performance of the motorcycle, such as inertial braking, it has active steering, and it's got suspension. It also has a, uh, an, an adaptive mounting mechanism, which allows you to mount different types of bicycles for different uses. We used our school's resources primarily. We're all third-year mechanical engineering students. We have a um, very excellent access to an, a very good shop. Uh, it's got all the key machines that we uh, needed to get this done. One of the guys actually was the one that had the issue of, of wanting to do this. He uh, sold his pickup truck as the primary means and he converted to just riding a, a motorcycle. And so he's an avid uh, mountain biker and he didn't have a way of getting his mountain bikes to the mountain and eventually we decided to just build something to get it done. Um, if we're able to get people away from using their full-size vehicle to haul all their recreational vehicles, then it greatly reduces the, the carbon footprint. We are in the process of getting it patented. Um, we've, we want to get it marketed. It's definitely something that people would use. We've had excellent feedback, and uh, we do want to take it to the next level and, and get it out to, to the market. What I've done here, as you can probably tell from the title, is mobile technology for the blind. So I realized that these phones that we carry around are just so powerful and we're just not using them for the purposes that we can. So I started this whole project with gaming. I created a game for blind people based completely on zero visual interaction. The core of the game is you have to traverse a maze. This is kind of a layout of what my uh, high school's first floor is like. Currently, if, if there was a blind student, for example, going to my high school or any other location, they would have a physical model much like this, which they have to run their finger through to kind of understand where everything is. Frankly, I think that's very primitive, expensive, not scalable. I mean, there are a lot of people who could benefit from something that, that's much more accessible. So what I did is I tried to expand the concept of gaming to navigation. To start playing, tap one, game menu. So we'll just try a, a really quick classic, uh, classic game. Level two, four by four classic maze. Essentially, suppose you hit a wall when you're moving through, then your phone vibrates, gives you the haptic feedback. If you wear the shoe, this is connected via Bluetooth to the cell phone, it tells you every time you take a step. And 
since the cell phone has a digital compass, you know which, what your orientation is, you know how much you're, what distance you're walking because of this, and it can kind of give you a live sense of where you are in, in, in the world. Since Google hasn't mapped anything indoors yet, why not create a map of an indoor location like this? So Google is really helpful when, suppose you want to come to this building, you know how to get there. But afterwards, suppose a blind person wants to get inside and understand, you know, you can click on the building and be like, okay, there's an accessible map available for this, do you want to enter? and something like this would pop up.